a little dark, yeah, but lovely day in the neighborhood. <laughs> yeah, it really was a nice day. Uh, Should have got out here sooner, but I didn't. So, well, that's just too bad. So, we're going to do a free will video. Yeah, Professor Anton, everybody's talking this free will again. And, um, they're talking the will. The will, they call it the will. Like if it's something different, if it's not free, if it's power will, or if it's super will, or magic will, or conscious will, like any of this crap <sighs> makes any difference. <sighs> consciousness is weird. But everything that happens in your consciousness is a product of your maturation. You're an animal at heart, you desire things, your brain is a scheming tool. The fact that you're conscious is sort of neat, okay? I mean, um, and it's probably a consequence of the fact that it was only through this mechanism of consciousness that you could you could create sensation, this this qualitative positive and negative, the whip and the carrot. The, that's the basic um, functionality that probably necessitated this consciousness. It would all be just knee jerks. It could be very complicated knee jerks, but it would just be knee jerks. It would just be mechanical reaction in the world if it wasn't for the necessity to create this theater for this thing called the feeling to take place in. Uh, a qualitative feeling. Something that feels good and something that feels bad. That's the real tricky part. Um, you know, creating a lot of loops um, for uh, data to go through before it pops out. Well, that a computer can do. But a computer can't do this feeling self-interest thing. The desire mechanism. That's the part the brain was making. The fact that it attached the behavior um, uh, idea, schemer, the the scheming machine to, <laughs> to the behavior machine seems pretty obvious why it would have an incentive to do that. Uh, but anyway, will is just a, a one of the programs running in you. It's a concept. It's an idea. You have an idea of will. Um, and you can sort of see it in your own life. I mean, there was a point in your life where you just lived. You didn't think about living. And then there was a point where you said, oh my God, I'm alive and I'm going to, I'm interacting and I'm feeling and I'm, you start becoming aware of the fact that you're actually doing this functionality and then you attribute you know a self to it but it's all just an idea in your head that part's just an idea it's just a notion that you make decisions that you choose that you do all of that crap there's no you doing it there's just different programs different ideas principles fighting with each other so do you have an idea about wanting something and then you have another idea that says well you can't have it and then those two fight with each other and one of them wins, and it wins because of how you've maturated, what you validate inside your brain. There's another conceptor that says, these are the principles I live by. And that one's sort of been given authority mm, by whatever mechanism. Um, it's probably worth exploring those mechanisms, but not with the language these people are using. So anyway, this is Professor Anton video. I'm using Piro's tool. I don't know how well I did it, actually. I probably missed the good parts and skipped. But whatever, we're just going to do it this way. So here's the first bit I didn't care for. It's not playing. Play. Fucker. Play it. Let's see if it does. Play it, please. Please play it. Please. 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 Oh, come on. You mean it's not going to play the damn thing? Ugh, fuck. Pure your tool sucks. Pure you play this one. Nah, it's not going to play. It's just not going to do anything. It's just going to sit here like a piece of shit and do nothing. Resume. Let's try that. Resume. Nope. Play all. Let's see if that does anything. Do, 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 do. Great. Fantastic. Super. Nothing. Let's see. Small. Let's go with the small window. See if that does something. 
No, nothing. How can I reload the video without killing my notes? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I really don't. All right, let's try something else. I don't know why we're trying anything. I'm just going to just give up. All right, so this video is going absolutely nowhere quickly. Try one more of these things. Stupid, fucking stupid tool. So for whatever reason, it is it is fucked me here. Let's see, can I save this as something? Save. No, I can't save that. Delete new. Can't do that. I can't save this somehow. Well, we'll try reloading and see if it saves it. Sorry. I really didn't think it should have been a problem. It's not reloading. Oops, flash and JavaScript needed. Well, I got this flash and JavaScript on there, please. Okay. It might be doing something now. There, we're in business. Anybody who's been paying attention on the news lately is... No, go ahead, go this far. ...religious dogma, and in doing so, they're suggesting that there is no such thing as agency, that there is no such thing as will, or that there is no such thing as decision-making and choice. There's really just a fully deterministic universe, and everything else is just an illusion. And I want to say, look, no, it's much more complicated than that. It has to do with multiple levels, kind of inter... Yeah, whatever. <laughs> no, no, that's what it is. There's, yeah, there's, it's complicated, but it is determinism. I mean, I can make something look really complicated. Here, look. I noticed this the other day. I was just sitting here, just futzing around, and this little thing, this little wire thing, look at this thing. You, you just hit it, and, and it does these, these weird patterns. Right now, those are really weird patterns. I mean, it's bouncing around. It's patterns. It's really complicated, but it's all just plain physics. It's all deterministic. It's all it's all got a mathematical reality to it. But it looks holy shit. That's that's fucked up, right? It's got a real holy shit. That's fucked up kind of, you know. But it's not. It's it's all mechanical. There's no magic in there. There's no. It's all predictable. And uh, yeah, so. You know, we're complicated. So what? That doesn't mean that we aren't completely owned, just owned, uh, by our life experience and the disposition of the particular type of animal we are. That's just the way it is. No big deal. Let's just admit the truth and move on to step two, which is saying, holy shit, this really is dumb. These are just highly problematic. I mean, one has to be able to address something like choice or agency or premeditation. I mean, we, we do make lots and lots of legal distinctions based upon was an action intended or accidental. Now, if we say that it was intended... Yeah, well, we sort of been over this one. I mean, we make those distinctions as part of a social contract, not as part of some sort of, like, this is going to fix the problem thing. Obviously, if somebody kills your kid, you're not going to fix. Your kid's not coming back. There's no way to get it back. Punishing the asshole who did it doesn't really accomplish anything. just makes another guy suffer. So that doesn't accomplish anything either. So you're suffering. You make the other guy suffer. It doesn't do any good. So there's no point in it. So we do it as a social contract, though, because if we make life miserable for the guy who did it, well, then another guy who might be thinking about doing it, he'll be thinking about it. It'll be in his brain, like one of the comparisons will be being made. He'll be thinking, there'll be a little thought pattern in there, a little dissidence created, and the dissidence will be, I don't want to go to prison, and I don't want to get beat up like that guy and raped and all that kind of shit, so maybe I just won't bother killing the kid, right? Um, and that's the whole idea, all right? It's to create thoughts in people's heads. That's why we punish criminals, is to create thoughts in the people's heads who still are walking around, who might be thinking they want to steal something, and we're going to make them think about it twice, <laughs> you know, by creating dissidence in their head. Worry, concern, fear, that kind of shit. Uh, like problematic earlier understandings of, of what this phenomenon is. Okay, so I think one of the ways to come at the issue is to say the largest, most pervasive problem is how does time open to itself? And by that I mean to what extent are human beings places of nature which are open to the past and open to the future. And when I say they're open to the past, I mean they're able to experience things like remorse, guilt, regret, 
they're able to double think things that happened in the past and to see things that happened in the past within a retention of the context of the choice not taken. I mean, some of that is... It, <laughs> yeah, we're able to model the world the way it would have been, the way it could have been, the way it should have been. We can we can see, we can run it, we can see these different options and choices. And depending on what kind of disciplines we've acquired, what kind of inhibitions we have acquired, and that's what they end up being, is just inhibitions, rational inhibitions, um, we will choose, try to choose... <laughs> Our brain will seek, it will seek uh, a, a, a scenario that gets them what they want, what, what we want. I want the Cheeto. And it'll try to find a strategy where I can get the Cheeto without getting in trouble, without having something bad happen to me. And if I understand, you know, that the things I might be doing bad to to get my Cheeto are worthy enough, if I put a pretty or cute enough face on them, I won't want to hurt them. Now, if I can sit there and say, oh, they're just Chinese, Chinese people. I don't care about Chinese people. So I'll, I don't, I'll risk their health and their welfare, and I'll get my Cheeto um, through them. You know, we do that kind of stuff. We just write it off. We say, well, they're 5,000 miles away. They're not my next-door neighbor. I don't really care if I offend them a little bit. So I'll go fart on them. Um, but these are just strategies, and we see the, the maze, we see the game in our little model, and we run ourselves through it, um, and we figure out how likely it is that we're going to get in trouble, that we're going to get snapped in a trap, and, and we, we make judgments. Our brain judges the scenarios, and it goes, yeah, go with that one, you know, because it, it clears the dissidents by finding the strongest decision, and strongest kind of dependent on... Um, ego balanced against interest. Something like that. Whoops, wrong button. This button is the one I want. To eat later today to what I'm going to do with my life two weeks from now to what kind of retirement I'm trying to plan to, you know, am I or am I not trying to have children and am I preparing to leave something for them? I mean, the scale and scope of one's orient orientation toward the future is, is pretty amazing. Okay, so how does that happen? Well, what's, what are the key issues? I think my position would be that the organisms of the world, they all have various degrees of actualizing possibilities. So the, the question is, what is a possibility, where and when is a possibility, and how are they managed and actualized? Uh, right, sort of, kind of. And obviously we manage possibilities. It's like there's a boat, and a boat with radar is going to have possibilities that a boat without radar isn't going to have, because the boat with radar can navigate impossible circumstances for the other boat, right? There's a minefield. My boat has sonar. I can see where the mines are. I can navigate and weed right through them. The other boat has no chance in hell. It gets blown up. No chance in hell. All right, so we can navigate more complex environments because we have this more complex bullshit. By the same token, that complexity through our edification has essentially made us more complicated ourselves. We are now the minefield. The minefield now exists in our own brain in the, in the fact that we, we learn that, oh my God, I can't win by enslaving other human beings. Oh shit, I can't win by eating other animals that are sentient and mistreating them and farming them and then eating them. That doesn't, I, I don't win this way. I'm, I'm creating more harm than my life is worth. So yeah, we can come up with obvious equations and say, this game isn't playable. Holy shit, don't play the game. Don't go into the minefield. There's nothing on the other side. We can figure out that there's no reason to even go. There's no reason to even play the game. Even though we have some sort of desire, some sort of instinct to say, pick up your sword and go fucking run it through some shit. Um, we can understand, oh, it's stupid war. Oh, I thought it was a war for something. I thought we were warring for something. Oh, we're just warring for the rich, or we're just warring for the sake of war? Oh, yeah, fuck that. I'll, I'll pass. I'll go have a, you know, cheese sandwich. Fuck you, people. Well, cheese is a bad thing. This cow's milk, you know, not a good thing. So I have a peanut butter sandwich. But anyway, it does, the point is, is our brain can do all that shit. And so, yeah, 
It was first started off as something that allowed us to navigate the minefield that is nature, and now the minefield is life is stupid. And that's, the, that's our biggest, the biggest bomb in our way now, is the bomb of the reality that the whole frickin' game we were built to play isn't playable by a rational, intelligent mind. And the only way intelligent people play this game is they come up with a bunch of fancy doodah words and concepts to veil the disgusting, hideous, grotesque nature of these, you know, naked testicles. I mean, this thing is just, it is, we've seen what it is. And it's not romantic and beautiful and sweet. It's a fucking succubus. And you're just sitting there putting lipstick on the succubus. You're just, you know, well, maybe we can cover it up with something. Get some paper mache. Fix it. Yeah, no, it's a lie. The whole fucking game is fucking bullshit. And um, that's what a brain can do. It can understand that it's bullshit. Once you start to get to smell... So, you know, and again, each of these senses, they rely upon the prior sense. And so, as you get from touch, taste... All right, I paused here just because this, was, this part was really wacky. He's just going through the senses and trying to make that the senses are some, something to do with will and all. And I'm saying, no, this is, whatever this is, dead end. This is cul-de-sac. This doesn't go anywhere. This is, sorry, professor, but no, this was, this was, this is, this is, this is my mush. <laughs> you know, we can do all of this crap without our senses. Our once our brain is informed, once it has a model, once it has the pieces, it can, it can do it all eternally. You can cut my arms and legs. You can cut the whole fucking thing off. Plug it into a iPod, and I could have a rich and fulfilling existence. So this is just all a bunch of shit. Senses are irrelevant once your brain gets to a certain state where it can entertain itself. Essentially, it can create enough of a world for it to just wallow in. Resume, I think. We'll see if that To hurts. smell, to hearing, to sight, and ultimately on to language and speech and communication technologies. As you do that, you know, that progression, you're seeing an expanded range of mediacies, an expanded horizon of possibilities being managed and actualized. Nah, whatever. Um, yeah, but like I said, it's all, the, all these little higher thoughts are just conceptual all right, and they're just, it's just pattern recognition. It's basically just finding the commonality between these things, these, this idea of principle, this idea of having a, a self-interest and also having integrity, um, being validated in the tribe, the, the alpha syndrome. I mean, we, we see the, um, the psychological patterns, and we see how those psychological patterns manifest into um, behavior where human beings will fly their airplane into aircraft character. They'll go on suicide missions because they can understand that it is, even though it doesn't appear to be in their self-interest, it's in their self-interest to somehow do that. Okay, That they have created a self-interest in, in harming themselves because they see a greater good to be accomplished through the behavior. And that's what we're capable of because we have intelligence, not because of anything else. The hardware doesn't want us to be any of this shit. We didn't get the hardware by doing this stuff. We got the hardware by doing the uglier, stinkier stuff of, you know, whatever, following a, a herd of wildebeest and, and cooking their manure. That's, that's where we got this sense from. Experience that we call freedom or that that we call the will or the capacity to exercise one's agency that is you know cognitive dissonance is one of the most powerful and potent theories in in uh, psychology why does cognitive dissonance occur how is it possible now if we say that cognitive dissonance is just an illusion why why would you have an illusion what, isn't it the case that cognitive dissonance is a symptom of our felt agency? That only an organism who is open to time and open to the experience of choice could feel cognitive dissonance, and then that feeling of cognitive dissonance is part of the willing to resolve the, the I guess, the... No, no, well, whatever. I mean, which one is the cause and which one is the symptom gets a little complicated because it all depends on how you use this vocabulary. But the bottom line is, is that's the whole function of, of brains and making these assessments of your strategic alternatives. 
you have to have cognitive dis dissidence to do that. You have to be able to think of best, better, and be you know um, perfect solutions. You have to be able to measure these things to be able to, to have that functionality. So you could never acquire a notion of a superior ideology, a superior way of living, a better way of living, a more efficient way of living. None of that stuff would be possible if dissidence wasn't the mechanism through which you acquire that. The very fact that is that you have one thing show up here and there is this evaluation process and the dissidence is created when there is some competing idea that's a, that, 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 that has a texture or a nature to it that, that says this might be a better choice. Let's run this scenario. Um, because we might have a better outcome. And that's the whole point, is to find the best outcome, the most efficient path through the minefield. That's the, the nature of the brain's function. Fists. People can, I guess, manage and actualize possibilities in a way that apparently no other organism has to struggle with. And, I mean, the argument would be that or no. People can, okay, well, I'm sorry, I guess, repeating. manage and actualize possibilities in a way that apparently no other organism has to struggle with. And I mean, See, that's sort of annoying. I mean, obviously, we are able to disable ourselves, inhibit ourselves m with with much more frequency than a, than any other animals because they can't understand what they're caught up in. The lion doesn't have the dissidence of empathy for the thing he's eating because he doesn't understand what he's eating, all right? So if he had the knowledge of his circumstance, he would likely have dissidence also. He would be able to do the logic and say, well, my cubs aren't better than those lambs, and so why am I making this distinction where I kill one and I, I lick the other? Um, so, so, yeah, um, having knowledge creates a real dilemma for the human organism in terms of the fact that we have so much more to inhibit us but to imply that somehow they don't have the same problem the nature of their problem is the same they have imperfect strategies to navigate sloppy worlds and they are you know I mean I don't have to go into too much detail I mean we can see how animals mother animals react and we can see how males act regarding their territory we can see their passion we can see that they're caught up in um, a tremendous amount of of dissidence but their dissidence is not over some conceptualization it's over the dissidence the conflict between the fact that they want uh, you know again and they have to navigate through the alpha to get what they want I don't know whether there's, I don't think I need to resume here, do I? 841, well, I guess I do need to resume here. The argument would be that organismal anxiety, as it's experienced by humans, and I mean the suffering of, of despair, of anxiety, of, I guess, all forms of, of life stress that partly come through imagined and partly real set. Yeah, well, life stress. Again, this is these are things animals have plenty of. So again, this this you're always trying to do this to animals, and I don't know why you have such a thing against animals. All right, they're just stupid. It doesn't mean they're idiots. You know, and they have a bunch of functional, strategic. They're doing the same thing we're doing. They're just not doing it on the same level that we're doing it on, and the level for us you know it doesn't make the the emotional game much different it just makes the intellectual game obviously much different something like that now i guess one last way to try to to round this haggle out would be if you don't think that any of that makes sense that's fair enough i mean i, I could see somebody trying to critique it i, I don't know what what the critique is I mean, person just wants to say, well, that's not what I mean. I guess I would want to say, well, this is the the baby that you need to save while you're throwing out the bathwater. You, you, you can give... Yeah, but again, see, but there's no reason, t there's no baby. There really isn't. I mean, you're saying that the baby is somehow this idea that we want and we come up with strategies to get. And that's not much of a baby, to tell you the truth. It's one ugly, stupid, dumb baby. It's 
it's just not a very functional thing you're trying to preserve. You're just preserving a contrived desire mechanism and applying a um, superficial and incomplete judgment mechanism to decide how you'll navigate the maze. You're just saying the baby is the rat in the maze. And there's, that's not a baby. Okay, I mean, a human standing above the maze complexifying his existence by saying, well, how do I, this is not playable, I need to move stuff around, I need to change this, I need to change that, I need to fix this, I need to fix that. Well, maybe that's not terribly functional, but the original rat in the maze isn't too damn functional either, especially when it's nature's maze. So get real, nature's an idiot. Get rid of all the dogma, but you're going to have to realize that there is something about the human experience of choice and agency that makes life so difficult, right? I mean, I think that's part of what makes life the responsible right, right. problem that it is. That difficult, right? Difficult. I mean, isn't that isn't that kind of ironic language? Uh, I mean, the part of us that makes us capable of understanding the how awful it really is, how dangerous it is, how destructive it can be, how terribly, terribly horrid it can be, that part is somehow a negative. I mean, come on. I mean, that's the only thing that gives us any dignity or at all is the fact that we can get, dig ourselves, elevate ourselves out of this hedonistic um, nonsense where we do it because we're too stupid not to. I mean, what the fuck is that? That's 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 the baby. Do it because you're too stupid not to. That doesn't sound like an alternative. No, it doesn't. Humans have self-reflexive consciousness and are responsible. It's as if nature has a basic principle, and the nature is. It rules and lords over those who cannot lord over themselves, and so humans have been willed into wanting a conscience. It's like nature willed the human into the continuous state of wanting to have a conscience because humans can't legislate themselves except by all... Yeah, well, that's sort of just nonsense, right? I mean, we didn't grow a taller neck, you know, to reach the uh, pear tree whatever the hell it was. Um, so that's, you know, that's not the game. We know where the game was. The game was is that once you build a, a strategy machine, there's, there's, a, there's, an, a, there's an implication where, you know, once you have a computer that can do word processing, well, maybe it can do images, and maybe it can do something else, and maybe it can do calculations. And so that was nature's fault. I mean, it made the, it made the, the, the hardware, and then we fell on the software, which was language, and that gave us the power to really utilize this thing um, to really understand environments and really tear them to pieces. And now we've torn it to pieces in every little tiny bit of the ground and every little bit of space. We are meticulously pulling it all apart and revealing it for what it is. Now that, in my opinion, is the only thing good about our existence. But everything else about our existence that nature gave us was absolute crap. It was reproduction for the sake of reproduction, pointlessly, perpetually, for no gain but to make great gladiators that could hold their sword up, um, you know, shoot them in the head, clean the whole thing up again, start over again. What the fuck for? That's right, for no good reason whatsoever. Oh, by cultural forms cultural sensibilities about what to eat, what not to eat, or by cultural forms, yeah, cultural this. sensibilities about what to eat, what not to eat. What he, keeps, he keeps doing that. He keeps calling this cultural. Like if you become a vegetarian, he's calling that some sort of cultural thing. Like liking to play baseball versus playing cricket. Or liking, um, you know, football with the roundy foot, you know, with the oval football versus soccer, you know, or, or, or European football. And like somehow these silly preferences, and that's what our food choices are. No, they're not food choices based on a silly preference, especially not one we were maturated with. For most vegetarians, it's something they acquired, okay, because they required understanding. So at least get this stuff right, okay? We're not fucking robots to culture. We're robots to ideas. And sometimes ideas become dominant in a culture. Sometimes they're really good ideas, like... I'll judge a man based on the content of his character, not the color of the skin. Yes, yeah, some of these things are really, really good ideas. They're not just some sort of cultural totem pole. 
So that is a little bit bullshit, Professor. I really hate when you do this shit. Where to go, when to go there, what to touch, what not to touch, where to look, what not to look, what to say, what not to be heard saying. All of these kinds of dynamics become part of our, our exercise and experience of self. That is, if we didn't have any agency, why would we ever experience guilt, remorse, regret over something that we did. It would be like, well, we didn't have any option to do otherwise. Some of those experiences, they wouldn't have any concrete reality to make the, the feelings be real. I mean, the reality of the feelings come from a sense that there were other options. If you generally, I mean, genuinely didn't feel that you had any other options and you just were doing what only possibly could be done, there wouldn't be any of those feelings. Yeah, well, see, again, this doesn't matter, all right? We know this is, it's biology. This, you know, our brain wasn't built by a fucking scientist. It was built by four billion years of evolution, all right? And we already know that evolution does lots of redundancy stuff. It lots, does, does lots of stupidity stuff. I mean, it makes some wacky crap, all right? And it lets it stick around because nothing destroys it, but it's still wacky. It's way too eccentric. It won't survive the 500-year flood thing, or it won't survive the 10,000-year meteor. I mean, there's lots of failure throughout that whole evolutionary history. Most species are dead. Um, most designs have hit the um, ash heap of history. So, um, that's, so, so the fact that you are conscious might just be a symptom okay, of the functionality, because nature just doesn't care whether you're actually feeling what it's calling the negative, the error code. So when it flashes error, it maybe it just doesn't give a fuck whether you feel it or you don't feel it, because it doesn't have to give a fuck. All right? But the point is, is what, what leaks into some sort of thing that you're calling extra, it really just doesn't care how much noise this fucking engine makes. All right? It just cares about making the engine. It cares about making the machine that consumes and can navigate the world. And it really doesn't care how much internal strife you go through. I mean, I made this argument before, but theoretically, insects, if they feel, they may go through the most torturous, horrid experience every time they go into one of those chrysalises and all of a sudden their eyeballs are where their balls used to be. Um, they might be, it might be absolute torture that they experience, and nature wouldn't give a damn, okay? It just couldn't care less, because all it cares is that the butterfly pops out in the end, and that it's functional. So if it doesn't kill it, if it doesn't hurt it, it doesn't care how much it hurts it. And that's the truth of this fucking insidious nature that you keep subtly trying to defend. walk around in a public place completely blindfolded would be significantly dangerous. And why? It's because your agency is being diminished because you don't have some of those capacities for recognizing possibilities, managing them, and then actualizing them. Uh, calendars and other forms of higher order strategies are just that logic uh, extended out. At any rate, those are some thoughts. Uh, hope everyone... Yeah, well, again, it's not the agency part. Again, it's not, okay? I mean, an ignorant man can be as bold and full of himself as, as an intelligent man. So it's not the degree to which we analyze our function as a seer. It's the fact that we see. It's the fact that we are the vortex of our senses, and we move forward through the environment from that vortex. And what is more important than what we see is what we desire from it. I mean, that's the big one. That's the one pulling us through there, is our want and our fear, uh, the stick and the carrot. Those are the things propelling us, and that's the subject that we should be talking about, is what is that made out of? And we can see what that's made out of. That's made out of a DNA molecule capitalizing on a capacity to create the illusion um, of something desirable and something fearable. And the illusion is created out of sensation that has qualitative uh, meaning to us. Whether it is making something bad more bad, which is an obvious negative, or making something bad turn it into good. I mean, something obviously when you make something less bad, it becomes a good. 
And that's the game we're caught up in. It might be a game that is completely zero-sum. That we're just fighting between degrees of misery. And we're not smart enough yet to figure that out. Some of us aren't smart enough yet to figure that out. <laughs> so anyway, uh, no offense, Professor. don't mean to cut your video up. Just trying it, so please don't take any offense. I wasn't trying to pick your video to pieces or anything. Just trying to cut the size of my video down a little bit. Does it get a little bit, uh, you know, out of control? So anyway, other videos, uh, yeah, on the website, I guess I may up post this on YouTube, what the hell, um, and throw it in there, so I'll throw an update video in here, might as well go to the website real quick here, the do not got her one anyway, do 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 do, nothing, no, it's computers, just kidding, what's wrong with you, come on, hurry up, hurry up, damn internet, come on Firefox, come on, I mean this is way too long, this should have loaded way, like years ago. I do have like 17 windows open. Yeah, it's probably too many. Um, <laughs> anyway, all right, yeah, so I did a Piro Sucks video. This is a long one, 48 minutes or something, I don't know. But yeah, just on this free will stuff, and I'm just sick of Piro. He just keeps using all this fudgy language, and this subject is just, you know, we've been over and over and over this stuff. I mean, you really should cut this down to some sort of manageable pieces, like whether you're talking about... The, the, the notions in our head, you know, and that's what they really are, just notions in our head. Uh, are you talking about the conditioned desires in our head, or whether you're talking about the biological needs that manifest as conditioned desires? I mean, come on. There's pieces to this thing that are our functionality, and none of the pieces are mysterious, and none of them are quanta. And there is no quanta choosing or any of this other crap. So quit trying to drag physics into this conversation. It is bullshit. It's not about physics. It's about programming. Damn. All right. Um, then th this is uh, the modern mystic We're continuing our conversation. So some of these videos, if you didn't watch the beginning of them, you're not going to get any of this shit. So that one's sort of no point. This is another Piro to be serious comment video, I guess it was. And uh, this is the, another one of the modern mystic videos. Modern mystic video, two-ended stick of pain. Modern mystic video. So that's pretty much. I've been pretty much just talking with the modern mystic. Um, he's the only person with a brain anymore. I mean, you people really you just keep talking mumbo jumbo and bullshit. Uh, you know. Yeah. I mean, really. I mean, get serious. <laughs> get serious. Now, don't get serious. Because serious people on the internet aren't serious. <sighs> Sick of these fuckers. I don't even let you know who you are, you whining coward. Who the hell is he talking to? I kick ass, all the others and suck balls. From the professor. Yeah, well, that's an old quote. So why don't you work at Google or Microsoft? Isn't that hilarious? Somebody who thinks, like, say, say if I really was the most intelligent man on earth, do you think the most intelligent man on earth would have the ambition to work for Google or Microsoft? That's what they would do with their intelligence. They wouldn't be intelligent enough to know that money doesn't matter. You're that silly. Hmm? Oh, yeah, you are. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're such an asshole. Fucking commenters. Morons. Fucktards everywhere. Oh, yeah, Karina, too. I might as well throw that in there. Because she made a video. You know, she posted one. Uh, it's a good, usual Karina video. I mean, it's, you know, yeah. I mean, you know, it's chizzy. It's got some stuff in it. She talks funny about God and insults him and then puts the cat at the end. But she's selling her paintings, some more paintings. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's what she's doing. Yeah, some guy is, uh, whatever, you know, some other guy who's begging, e-begging, and so he's, he's selling his Karina painting. I just thought that was funny. I mean, her paintings are already getting, now they're already getting resold. So it is kind of funny. be interesting just to track them over time. Like, you know, it goes from Romania to some guy in England, and it goes to some guy in America, and then it goes to some guy in Australia. I mean, just kind of funny. Um, sort of. I mean, not funny funny, but funny, weird. Yeah, that's it. 
But anyway, it's kind of strange when people do a be- e-begging video and they start off with something like, I was expecting $1,500 you know, tax refund or something, and they just say, and I didn't get it. And that's all you got for us? That, that's it? <laughs> I mean, you, there must be a reason you didn't get it. Oh, Jesus. So anyway, I mean, that just doesn't sound like the kind of mistake you just make. Oh, yeah, I was expecting $1,500, but nah, it, was, it was just a silly notion in my head. I didn't really have any right to it at all. <sighs> so anyway, that's kind of a lame story to start with, I think. So anyway, it doesn't matter. It's, it's totally irrelevant. It's a whole different story. Eh, damn, she's pretty. You know, that's what the comments mostly are. Just, damn, she's pretty. I mean, you know, I have to concede. It's, it's It does... It is an influence. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter. It really shouldn't, but it does. It's evil. Evil! Should be smarter than that, Gary. Well, I am smarter than that, but it just I'm also smart enough to evade the smartness. <sighs> and we won't even go in. Yeah, we won't even... Yeah, it's biological reasons. So anyway, it doesn't matter anyway, that kind of personal crap, you know, you can be any kind of, you can want to believe, you know, <laughs> you know, um, ducks can eat slop, go ahead, believe it, it doesn't matter. I'm just using a backwards pig metaphor, it didn't really work. So ducks don't fly that well anyway. Generally speaking. Alright, this video is way too long, I'll shut up now. Yeah, I didn't update, so I was just thinking if there was something else I heard to point out, but can't think of it at the moment, so I'll move along. So I'm moving along now. See ya.